I started when I was 16 years old. Um, I had this ambitious idea to become a famous makeup artist and I took a course in Vancouver and from there I took advanced theatrical makeup and I went on to black and white makeup, photography makeup, theatrical makeup, film and television makeup and I started practicing a lot of my work in, um, with mostly photography in the beginning which I loved. The fashion photography industry is always so much fun in what you can create. And then from there I became an instructor and I guess my value of what I bring to the table as far as teaching is concerned became very well recognized and I worked in some pretty big schools um, in the Vancouver area. I started to expand and get my hours for the IATSE Union and so I ended up doing a lot of telethons and TV commercials and talk shows, that sort of thing. But really, it, um, it, wasn't my, it wasn't my thing in terms of the industry. I just I wanted to really work on the general public. I just had such a love for women in general. And as fun as that industry was, it just wasn't calling me. I found out when I was 15 years old one night, I remember being... Um, quite somber and just deep going deep within myself and I started to uh, pick up a piece of paper and a pen and and it, it amazed me I, I drew one of the Hart sisters um, I don't know if you know who Hart is but yeah <laughs> they were a very good rock band and I drew one of them and I was amazed at um, how well I did and I just love the bone structure of women and the beauty of women so it just really started to call me in terms of I guess makeup is like drawing and, and pulling out the value and the beauty of a woman. I actually initially wanted to do an all-day seminar with 50 lucky ladies because I have taken an awful lot of training and been in the industry for a fair amount of time and it's kind of interesting the things that I learned and I started to be able to apply them to what I call street makeup which is just your average everyday makeup. Um, so you can take some professional things and actually apply it to everyday makeup. So that started to call me and I thought, well, we'll do a seminar. You know, it's time that the general public, the ladies, um, the baby boomers, I guess, are my love right now, that they um, be able to really feel confident with their makeup. I'm finding that it's just too often said, well, splash color here, splash color there. And that just really has very little to do with um, how well makeup really turns out. And I've noticed too with a lot of my clients that they just seem to lack the confidence. A lot of times they'll avoid the makeup thing or they've done the same makeup for 25, 30 years. You know, just because um, you're born a girl doesn't mean that you know how to do makeup. And where does anyone take, take a young girl who's emerging into womanhood? you know, other than, than seeing color splashed on here or this person's eyes are done this way if you want your eyes to look like theirs, which of course can't be done because no two eyes are the same. So you really need to understand the concept of what is best for your eye. Well, it just seems that professional things are being brought into every area of our life these days. I mean, I remember a time where you could never buy a waterfall, for example, um, at the store. You would have to have someone, you know, professional bring it in. And now you find them at Rona all the time or, you know, so it just seems that professional things are coming into every area of our life and even you know, home decorating and what have you. But the makeup part hasn't really been brought to the forefront. It seems that the professionals within the industry of photography makeup or film television makeup, they are interested in teaching professionals. They're not really interested in teaching the general public. They're using their skill, which is amazing. And um, like, for example, old age makeup. And they're using that in the film industry. And we watch these movies and go, wow. But they're not sitting down with the general public saying, you know what? This is how you can make somebody look old. And by the way, if you reverse it, this is how you can make them look young. I do have a passion for women. I'm one of them myself. And life can be hard as a woman. You know, you need to look together and put together. You need to feel good. We're very feeling based. 
And if we're not feeling good that day, then obviously the whole day just goes to pot. So here we are in the workforce now, and we're still in the homes raising our children. We are doing so many amazing things, writing books and just amazing things. I mean, going for Congress and what have you. And confidence, you know, when you're feeling good and you feel good about the way you look, you can present yourself to the world and do your job better when you're not thinking, ooh, you know, when you look in the mirror and you see yourself and you go, wow, you're ready to go do what you need to do that day and not even concern about how you look. Well, I'm not very good with big words, so I mean, philosophically, I'm not quite sure what my philosophy would be other than um, perhaps just have fun with makeup you know, and celebrate your womanhood. I think there's an awful lot of unusual things going out there with women these days. You know, there's, there's a movement that is, oh, well, you shouldn't focus on your femininity too much because it takes away from your strength or what you're capable of doing as a person. I totally disagree with that. I think that you shouldn't hide the fact that you're a woman. It's obvious that women were designed to be beautiful, for they are beautiful. And at any stage in their life, whether they're 20, 30, 40, or 50, as a matter of fact, the older women get, that doesn't change the fact that they're so unbelievably beautiful, especially if you compare it to the counterpart of a male aging. I mean, women just seem to be beautiful right to the very end. And I think that should be celebrated, you know, not obsessed with, um, but have fun with it, you know, learn things and, and enjoy your womanhood. My market is primarily in my heart right now leans to the baby boomers because they've changed their hair over the years and they've even managed to change their clothes, but they have not changed their makeup. They're watching these, you know, makeovers on TV and that's all fine and dandy, but really how does that translate into what that can do for them? Hopefully this will help them to translate a language that they understand. Oh okay, so my bone structure is this way, so this is where I should put the highlight, or that's where I should put the contour. Oh, so makeup isn't anything about splashing color. It's actually about creating an illusion. And that's exactly what makeup is all about. When I was a young child, I remember that they put me up on stage and they put me as the sister suffragette. So perhaps the teacher saw something back then that I didn't even know about. But I have been a single mom for a good portion of my life, and I've also been married, so I understand the many different faces that a woman can put on and has to put on. Um, also, I've been a businesswoman, and you know, I, I do like to keep going forward and moving forward in life. But yeah, my mission is just to love up on women and help them to have fun with themselves and to love themselves more. That's probably what I have the most fun with. And in between, I take breaks with my children and love them. Om Shri 